as mentioned in the previous video, one of the functions of the cell membrane is to allow particles to move across it. The interesting thing about the way substances move across the cell membrane is that it can be divided into three types of movement or three modes of transport, which is known as the passive transport, active transport, and bulk transport. And under passive transport, it's further divided into two types of movements known as diffusion and osmosis. So before we go through diffusion and osmosis in detail, the first thing we have to understand is what exactly is uh, passive transport. Passive transport itself is just basically the movement of substances down a concentration gradient, which basically just means from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. And one of the most important things to also mention about passive transport is the fact that this type of movement does not require ATP or energy molecule. So the first type of passive transport we are looking at in this video is known as diffusion. By definition, diffusion just means it's the net movement of particles from a region of higher to lower concentration. You can also say down the concentration gradient if you want to, due to random motion of the particles. What it means by random motion of the particles is particles just move automatically due to the nature of our universe where they will just basically move from an area of higher to lower concentration automatically. Now, imagine a room in this case, and in this room, I put a divider. Okay, it's just a single room. It doesn't have to be a cell, by the way. In the room over here, what exactly happens is, I'm going to draw out in the first diagram that you can see on the left side, I've drawn out at least about 12 particles, and on the right side, I've drawn out two particles. So if I were to ask you a question, in which area is there a higher concentration and which area is a lower concentration, it's very obvious. The left has a higher concentration of particles and the right side has a lower concentration of particles. So what will happen is, in this case, due to the nature of particles in our universe, they will always diffuse from an area of higher to lower concentration. So in this case, you will have more particles moving from left to right compared to particles moving from right to left, as I've represented in the number of arrows. You can see that I've put four arrows moving to the right and one arrow moving to the left. This is referred to as a net movement from left to right, okay? Because more are moving from left to right compared to the other way around. If you give it enough time, you can now see that in the third diagram on the right, the amount of particles on the left and right are now equal. So we would say that it has achieved equilibrium. And when it has achieved equilibrium, what actually happens then, I will ask you then a question. Do the particles stop moving? Some students will say, yeah, particles will then stop moving. That is wrong, by the way. Particles will still continue to move no matter what, because that is just the nature of particles, random motion. But the interesting thing here is the movement from left to right and right to left is now equal, which I've represented in the number of arrows. One arrow moving to the right and one arrow moving to the left. So in this case, when the amount of particles moving to either sides are equal, we would say that this is no more net movement. So the diagram in the middle tells us that diffusion is still occurring because there is net movement. But once it has achieved equilibrium, diffusion is set to stop. So how does this translate to the cell? This is very simple. For example, I'm drawing out uh, an animal cell here. You can see the cell surface membrane. And there will be oxygen molecules outside the cell. The amount of particles or the amount of the amount of oxygen outside the cell is higher than the amount of oxygen or the concentration of oxygen inside the cell. So due to random motion, oxygen will automatically move down the concentration gradient or it moves from an area of higher concentration to lower concentration. 
So more oxygen molecules will move into the cell than oxygen moving out of the cell as I've represented in the arrow. Eventually what will happen is it will reach equilibrium and diffusion will then stop. But when diffusion stops, it is as a reminder, I'm just telling you that the particles may still exit the cell or go into the cell, but it will do so at an equal rate as I've represented in the number of arrows going in and number of arrows going out. That is what diffusion is all about for now. The interesting thing is the cell does not technically need to do anything to allow the oxygen to enter the cells because this type of movement does not require ATP or energy molecule. 